Hey, hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about how to set up your QNAP NAS with QTS5 as the perfect media server for music. A number of you buy a network attached storage device to store huge amounts of musical data and although there are third party applications like Plex Media Server and MB that a number of people utilize as well as iTunes servers to enjoy their media, there are lots of other ways in which you can do it with most of them supported on the QNAP NAS platform. Now it's worth highlighting that right now I'm going to go through a bunch of ways in which to make not only the media on your NAS network accessible but also create craft the perfect audio server for yourself. But a lot of the subjects that I talked about today have already been discussed in the four parts prior to this video where I've talked about the perfect setups for your QNAP NAS. So Although I will mention them in this video, I might skip over them a little bit and I will highlight and recommend heartily that you do watch at the very least the photo tools and photo management video that came out just before this for your QNAP NAS as that contains a lot of the information on this. But to keep things nice and quick, do remember that in order to get your music files onto your NAS that you can drag and drop it directly into the file station interface as well as creating folders if you choose to right up here. Again, I go into way more detail and a great deal more slowly in previous videos to allow you to create folders here for your music. On top of that, it's worth also remembering that you can, when you've uploaded the files to this NAS, create a media server. So if you want to enjoy the music that you've got on your NAS on easygoing devices, such as DLNA, Digital Living Network Alliance, or UPNP, um, Universal Plug and Play devices, such as PlayStation, Xbox, iPhone, Android and more in the most simple straightforward fashion then you can go ahead and head into the application center of your QNAP, select QNAP store, then entertainment and then from there a list of applications will appear and these applications are the ones that we're going to look at. Now you can create a media server that is easily the most basic form of music streaming on your NAS. It's very straightforward and easy, and it allows less complex uh, uh, media client hardware that you're going to listen on to communicate with the NAS. I'm also going to talk about Music Station later on, which enables a bunch of other extra customization options, as well as play desk options and more. There's lots of third party tools on here that I'm not going to talk about in today's video, but I will still nonetheless recommend ones like Rune Server or creating a SuperSync iTunes media server, Kazoo Server, Mimin Server, and again, Plex Media Server and MB as well. Those are great tools, but they're all third party, and I'm really not going to touch on them too much in today's video. Also, there's video applications too that will be featured in the next video, but for now, once you've downloaded and installed both media streaming add-on and music station, we can carry on. The next thing we need to do is head into the control panel. In the control panel, go into the applications tab and then into DLNA media server. If you look at the control panel and it doesn't look like this, then chances are it will look like this. From here, go to the bottom and right there is the DLNA media server. From here, on the right hand side, you can give your media server a name. Decide which account that you've got on your NAS is allowed to utilize this server. Then go into the advanced settings and it will open up the media streaming add-on. If you want to get to this window another way, you can always just head into the main option there and media streaming add-on will be accessible and visible for you to head straight in down here at the bottom. Once you're in, the media streaming add-on, you can configure a lot of these options, such as which port on the NAS it's going to be utilizing, which network interface, also the menu styles that you can flick between, which each of these deciding what is available and visible to the end user. Will music be visible, top playlist collections, recently added? This will all be what is displayed on the client side. That is the device that's listening to the music and can access it, that has a graphical user interface. This decides how much they can see. Likewise, if you're streaming music to a Chromecast, I recommend ticking that box so you get the highest quality media and nothing compressed. Also on the left, you can utilize a lot of the browser settings that will change what's displayed. 
Some of these apply to video, some to photo, but the one in the middle will decide what is visible on screen to the connected user. Do they have all the information or just a limited amount of it? Lastly, media receivers allows you to scan the local area network, the LAN, in order to see which devices are on your network that can see your media server and you can see them. And if you choose to, you can decide that you don't want a certain device to be able to see your NAS and therefore see the media server. It's always useful and you can choose to add media servers automatically or you can bar them by default. Very useful for if you're concerned who can see your media server. Once that's done, your media server is pretty much good to go. And from there, you can now pick up the NAS on your local area network. How you see it will differ. For the, uh, on PlayStation, there is the media player application. On iPhones and Android devices, a lot of those have media streaming add-ons in the likes of YouTube Studio, uh, I'm sorry, YouTube Music and more, and iTunes. If you're on a PC, go into the My Computer tab as normal, go into Access Media and click Connect to Media Server, and it will scan the local area network and find the NAS. Then you can just double click and add the media server as I've already done here. Now, now you've got the visibility of your media server up there, the next thing you need to do is make sure the NAS can see your music. For that, you're going to need a tool called Multimedia Console. Again, it will either be pre-installed or available here on the list of applications on the QTS Essentials tab. Once you've got that installed, this allows you to tell the NAS where different file types live. So in the case of this, because you've installed the Music Station application and DLNA Media Server, select them on the Content Management bar. In Music Station, down here, click Edit. Then you've got the folder structure of your NAS that your account has access to, and then from there, find the folder which earlier you uploaded your music into. Find that folder and pop a tick next to that box. Make sure you put a tick next to the box that you put the music in, not just the folder that has the word music, as some applications will create default folders and you may not be connecting to the correct one. After that, click Apply. If there's ones that you want to exclude, they can be listed here, and you can repeat these steps to change the folders that the DLNA media server can access. Do bear in mind that the DLNA media server doesn't just limit you to music and can be used for all different file types. After that, it will be added automatically to the indexing process, which means the system will periodically check about files and update itself about any new files that have been added. On top of that, you can go to the transcoding tab, but that affects video as well as thumbnail generation only really affecting photos. From this point, you're pretty much good to go. If you want, you can change some of the permissions that Music Station has with regard to the different users in case that there's a user on your system that you want to give specific access to. But apart from that, Multimedia Console will now do the rest of its indexing and listing automatically in the background. And from here, we can make our way onto Music Station itself. Music Station appears here, and by default, you will see this screen, the Spotlight section. Now, bear in mind, there is an app for both iOS and Android to enjoy music on your mobile device easily and in an intuitive fashion. But if you are accessing Music Station or DLNA Media Server on a non-QNAP-supported client device and a generic-supported device over DLNA and UPnP, again, such as consoles, such as standard media boxes, Sonos, both sound systems, Fire Stick, and more, you will only see the folder structure. Within here, what we need to do is go into the Manage tab. From here, the music that was in the folder from earlier, in my case, in the multimedia tab, sorry, in the 653D tab here. Inside here, where I put my music, if I select the right folder without being in a rush, my music is here. It's all displayed, and if I choose to, I could go ahead and play a song here in the web browser. I'm gonna keep things muted, but I can right click, and if I choose to, I can play it from in the web browser, and it will play that file with a basic multimedia player. I can also 
with that file right click and stream to a connected network media device if I choose which will then output that file accordingly or if I've connected a supported USB adapter to Bluetooth it will appear there as well. However if you're on music station you have a bit more information readily available. Let's change the view to be shown to us here on screen as tabs so again we can change a lot of the user interface that we see here and how things are displayed. So for example, on the bottom of the screen here, we've got a list of just all of the songs listed one by one. If we choose to, we can show them as icons if they have album covers. If we've attached album covers, they'll appear there. Again, we can go into any song that we like here. Let's go inside this one. And again, we can double click and it will play the song at the bottom of the screen. Now, happening in real time. We can add it to a playlist, we can search online for the lyrics if we choose, and we can create shuffle mode, uh, play, apply the volume, and more. If we like this song and we think, oh, we'd love someone or one of our friends to hear this, we can right click, find out more information about it, if I was the admin account, of course, or if we choose to, we can share a lot of these albums quickly on the fly. If we go into the albums tab here, we can have a look at the available options above, which allow us to look at just album covers if we choose, and then from there, it allows us to choose if we want to share or if we want to download the files locally to our PC. We can even find out real-time information about these files if they're supported. We can choose to share it via a, a social media platform, via email, or as a simple link. With that link also having its time frame changed, choosing whether it can be internet or network only, whether it's got a password attached, or whether it will uh, expire in a certain period of time. We can even decide whether the end user can download it or not. It's that straightforward. And there you go. We've now created our shared file there. And if we choose to, we can share a whole album if we choose to. Do bear in mind, of course, while we're doing this, that if you go down to the shared center, we can find any files that we've shared and we can alter a lot of those sharing credentials if we so choose in case we want to change how it's shared how long it's valid for and more if we want to send this audio file to a supported connected dlna media device click this button up here and any media servers that support upmp will be listed here alternatively we can always stick with utilizing the dlna media server option if we go into the settings menu, we can add or change existing streamed media folders on the NAS which are being indexed in case we've added, for example, a USB stick which has got music on it or if we've connected an external DVD or CD um, reader to our NAS for over USB, we can add that device here as an extendable folder and that music will then be added to our music station. If we want, we can change the permissions for individual users on the system on the fly as an admin, whether we let them use internet radio services, Bluetooth, network media players, and more. And finally, if we've got um, other default folders for songs or want to change any of them, they can be added here, and that can be changed for lyrics as well. And it's that straightforward to enjoy music on your QNAP NAS. All of the configuration options I've showed you so far have been around for quite a while, Although some features on the system, such as the Smart Playlist, for my opinion, still need a little bit of work. They allow you, if you choose to, to create Smart Playlists that generally over time you can add files to simply by saying all of the media files within a certain period of time. So for example, if we go into it here and we can have a look at some files, we can choose whether we want to add this file to an existing media uh, sorry, um, uh, smart playlist, or we can choose whether we want to create just a simple bog standard playlist. And again, with a smart playlist, you simply add the parameters to search all the music on your NAS and it will create an album, sorry, a playlist based on the parameters you add. Whereas a standard playlist, of course, will simply allow us to listen to just the music, the music we choose in a playlist, like so. We create our playlist, give it a name, and it's as straightforward as that. And those playlists will be stored on the QNAP NAS, which can then be accessed from the other media server applications as long as you point them at the right directory. But this has been how to enjoy audio music on your NAS. 
bear in mind the lot of the changing and the conversion of files is useful on the NAS, but in the App Center, it's recommended for those that take their music quite seriously to look into Rune and some of these other more comprehensive multimedia tools. As some of the some of these play far more um, high-end audio file uh, formats more than Music Station. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, click uh, let me know by clicking like because it helps me understand what I'm doing right in these videos and it makes every video better than the last. If you want to be kept abreast of further updates on the QNAP NAS platform and the things you can do with it, then do click the bell and uh, the subscribe button to be kept abreast of those and take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares whether you've got a query about the right NAS or how to connect your NAS to your existing music system it's a completely free service manned by two humans me and eddie the web guy who do it in our spare time we talk help people out and we do it for no extra money there is a donate button lovely if you could use it ignore it if you want it's just there to help two humans and we don't do anything with your email thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time